Kurt Busch is without question a future Hall of Famer, certainly one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history. When him and his little brother were selected as part of the top 75 greatest drivers in NASCAR history, that pretty much confirmed it. But even though Kurt Busch went on to accomplish a lot in NASCAR, there were times that were extremely tough. This hit a boiling point during the 2011 and 2012 seasons, where it felt like it could go either way. He could either go on to be a future Hall of Famer or out of the sport entirely. But how does a former NASCAR Cup Series champion find himself in this predicament? Well, let's get into it. The rise of Kurt Busch has really gone largely forgotten, mainly because his brother Kyle pretty much eclipsed him in almost every stat category. But without question, without Kurt Busch, there certainly wouldn't be a Kyle. The big brother set the foundation. I'll put it like this. Kurt Busch went from becoming a truck series driver in the year 2000 to being the NASCAR Cup Series champion in 2004. But with such a fast rise came a sudden fall because at that point he was already one of the most controversial and hated drivers in the sport, not only for his sudden rise, but his spouts with some of the most beloved drivers. He also had a major temper and wasn't going to take any shit from nobody. Now he was was already set to part ways with Roush Racing to move over to Team Penske after the 2005 season, but unfortunately, this incident off the track is what sped up the process. In 2005, just a year after winning the Sprint Cup, Kurt was caught in a media nightmare after being pulled over in Phoenix. The cop realizes who I am, he runs the license, says, come on out, let's just see if you're drunk or not. We do all the field sobriety tests, I pass, he then cuffs me, and that's when I lose it. That was that snapshot. The sheriff gets on TV, says that there's been a NASCAR driver speeding on his streets. Let's fry him, let's fry him, let's fry him. Your reaction to being taken out of the 97 car here today? Yeah, obviously I'm upset. It's tough. Um, you know, I'm a race car driver. There's a race today, and I'd love to be in the race. Oh, my. My crew, Jimmy Fenning, I have to thank them for what they gave me. The media reports a suspected DUI, but Kurt was well below the legal limit and only charged with running a stop sign. Only in America can you go back to that same county, same sheriff, and he gives you a badge and just say, oh, I'm sorry that I screwed up your whole career. Here's a badge. And just a year later, Kurt was number three on GQ's most hated athlete list. While Kurt Busch certainly wasn't a saint, that whole deal involving the police was total BS. Blown so out of proportion that Roush Racing didn't care. They're like, you're already leaving, so adios. But from 2006 to 2011, Kurt Busch would go on to drive for Team Penske. And although he never won a championship for them, he did win quite a few races. But sometimes when you were listening to his radio, you would think he hadn't won in years. with his car right now. There's no way we can compete. Well, all that we're doing is hanging on to a track position that was given to us. It's the most frustrating thing in the world to think that you think that we're better than what we are. Now, if you didn't blow yourself up, we'd be a lot better. I'll tell you that right now. I'm watching this thing, okay? You made a change. It didn't work. Instead of saying, okay, let's go back with it. All we hear is a bunch of stuff on the radio. So let's get serious here, okay? You understand? Oh, 10 4, dude. 10 4. Roger, we don't make any good adjustments during the race. If we started 39th, we'd be three laps down running about 35th. Do you understand that? I don't understand your thinking if you want to know the truth. Let's just drive this thing. Do the best you can. Everyone's trying, okay? Well, we don't need a lot of rhetoric that's always negative. Okay, I'm the car owner, Greg. You listen to me, okay? Yeah, this is great. If you have a problem, you call me, let me know, but I don't need all the crap on the radio. Enough of it. Trouble off a of turn front. Kurt Busch slammed the outside wall. All right, guys, our handling just caught up with us. This is the worst car I've ever driven. Check up all the fucking damage. Fuck! Got there, Chris, did you see anything? Well, I can't see the right side from here. Uh, we're on the fucking back straightaway, fucking Einstein. Where the fuck did I pit? Fuck. 
it all came to a head in 2011. Now the season started off spectacularly as he won the Budweiser shootout and after the first four races he was the points leader and for most of the first half of the season he maintained a top five points position but then it started to taper off a little bit but he was still able to win multiple races, two in fact. But with all the success him and the team captured in 2011, it was overshadowed by his temper. Look like a fucking off. everybody! Bush had to be restrained from NASCAR.com reporter Joe Menzer on pit road. I didn't say that tonight. You did? Did not. I said we're in his head. Why the fuck do you think I'd be okay? I gotta go get in my car. NASCAR told me I'd yeah. get Two cars smoking and slow off the pace. That was from third place. Finally, at the series finale in Homestead, Bush made a gesture at a vehicle belonging to First Lady Michelle Obama in the garage area. All oh, this is wearing you out. It's just like, can I just leave now? I mean, I, I would just rather slip on the ground, hit my head, and be knocked out at this point. Why can't we take this As he's waiting for a live interview, a race fan captures Kurt's frustration. I wasn't even yelling at Dr. Punch. It was the camera guy who had the camera in my face, and he's on me without the, the camera rolling. And that's what pissed me off. Can you get this out of my face? These meltdowns were really the last straw, and in December of 2011, Team Penske and Kurt Busch decided to mutually part ways. It was a great idea for both parties to have a fresh start, but with this happening in December of 2011, where was Kurt Busch going to drive? All the top rides were taken. Fortunately, there was one team that was willing to roll the dice that being Phoenix Racing. They certainly weren't one of the top teams in NASCAR, they were actually one of the underdogs. It was a unique situation where you had one of the best drivers in NASCAR driving for an underfunded team. And with all of the attention he was already getting from the controversies, he was going to be under the microscope more than ever before. This was gonna be a rebuilding year for not only his career, but him personally. But now that he was with an underfunded team, there were definitely going to be some growing pains. There were going to be a lot of races where they were going to be completely uncompetitive. How would he handle this? Well, at first, not so great. In his first race with Phoenix at the 2012 Daytona 500, Kurt gets caught in a wreck. And I had nowhere to go and I'm in the wreck. That's how the season started. He took a hard lick right in the door. Don't pit, don't pit, don't pit, don't pit. Jesus H. Christ. I'm on pit road past the commitment cone. Bouncing like a bitch on the splitter. It's a black cloud above my head. That thing. You would not believe it. I ran over a piece of debris, blew the left rear out, and now we have a wrecked race car. I called it. I called it. I called it. Danielle, he called it. <laughs> <laughs> he called it. What happened to Kurt wanting to put the fun back in racing, Jimmy? Oh, right front tire. Right side's only here, guys. Really? You didn't have time to put lefts on it? We're already six laps down. All right, everybody. Kick your feet up. Grab a drink with an umbrella in. Wow. That's going to be a new record for me. Being done like this, 66 laps in. Really? Now the cool box just quit? Nice. The crew chief's still there, and he leaves. He's still hanging out, bud. I'm hearing all this. I bet you how much I hate this hole. Yeah, putting the fun back in racing certainly didn't happen overnight, but there was a silver lining during the first quarter of the season. In the then called Nationwide Series, he did win a race for his little brother. So at least there's that. But going back to the Cup Series, it was a roller coaster. At Talladega, they ran the Me Scheme, the famous Me Scheme from the Talladega Nights movies. And while he was leading, he unfortunately spun out and his race was over. And then you had Darlington. This is how it typically gets every week, every week. I hate my job. It's a run to come yet! They want you to drop part of the back. I am in there! I'm in there! Holy f***! Points here. 
As a result of the post-race altercation between him and the 39 crew, Kurt Busch found himself on probation. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. In the Nationwide Series race at Dover, he ends up getting a top five. He had a run-in with Justin Allgaier. Allgaier tried to talk to him after the race, and Kurt just didn't want to hear any of it. But when one of the most beloved reporters in the garage area, Bob Pachris, asked him a fair question about if it impacted him the way he raced him because he's on probation, Kurt's response... It refrains me from not beating the shit out of you right now because you ask me stupid questions. But since I'm on probation, I suppose that that's uh, in improper to say as well. After I got off of pit road. I told Rick Wren, the team manager for Kyle, on I think something serious is gonna happen. I think I just screwed up completely. And he goes, what'd you do? What'd you say? I'm like, well, I think that I told Parker someone to kick his ass, but I don't, really, I don't even know. The charge, verbal abuse to a media member. The punishment, a one week suspension. This is about respect for people like us that's trying to grow and build this sport. It's funny, they all were sitting in there, Kurt, we don't want to suspend you. We don't want to suspend you, but you put us in a box and the media is gonna rip us apart if we don't suspend you. This is when it became very serious because out of all of the things he did in the past, he was never suspended for it up to this point. After his one race suspension, he came back at Michigan and you would think he would be under the mindset of, okay, I have to to be on my best behavior, especially when it comes to dealing with the media. But when Marty Smith tried to interview him, when I saw him, we said hello, he said bring your camera. So that tells me bring the camera, we're gonna do the interview. I took a couple steps toward him, at which time he said to me, what are you doing? I'm not doing interviews right now. I then rebutted, Kurt, you just told me to bring my camera. We were going to come talk to you. And he said to me, haven't you ever heard of sarcasm. At that time, I looked at him and said, I'm the wrong guy to mess with. He then followed that up by spinning out in the opening laps of the Michigan race. At this point, just finishing the season would feel like a win. And speaking of wins, in the following race at Sonoma, Kurt Busch almost did just that. After putting together his best qualifying performance up to that point starting 8th, throughout the day it became apparent that he was on track to scoring his best finish of the season. But late in the race he's battling for the lead and although he had the chance to just completely dump Clint Boyer, he did the opposite and tried to pass him the clean way. But all of a sudden with 8 laps to go came problems. Holy smokes. Is the rear end even going to stay in the car or is it going to fall out? Am I going to get wrecked and end up 30th? That could have happened just that quick. But it didn't. Kurt Busch carried that car to a third place finish, his best of the season. Not only was he emotional during his interview, but when he left the media center, the media was giving him a round of applause. And really, that was the peak during his time at Phoenix Racing. Well, in the Cup Series. The goal at the end of the year was still to get a win with the team. He never specified what series it had to be. Earlier in the season he won for his brother in the Nationwide Series, can he do the same with Phoenix Racing? At Daytona with two laps to go, him and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. were tandem drafting and all of a sudden shot right through the middle of the pack, setting them up for a thrilling last lap battle. Coming off of turn two, Kurt Busch took the lead and never looked back. Here they come, checkered flag is in the air. Who's gonna win it? Oh, trouble. Austin Dillon spins, Kurt Busch wins. Think about the story of Kurt Busch, what the last seven months have been like for him. Lost his ride in the NASCAR Spring Cup Series. Put this deal together to go racing with James Finch to try and put his career back together again, to try and have fun. He's having fun now. To try and show that he and this race team could be competitive, could win races, and could do so in a style that fans would enjoy. This win remains my all-time favorite Kurt Busch victory. And truly, this was the only time I viewed him as an underdog. I know he had raced in the Cup Series for several months prior with Phoenix, but winning this race was truly 
an underdog victory, one of the greatest ever. Now the rest of the season never really got any better. Phoenix Racing and Kurt Busch sort of tanked. They had multiple DNFs, and during that season's chase for the cup in the fall of 2012, it was announced that he would be moving on to Furniture Row Racing while the season was still going on, meaning that at Talladega that fall, it would be his last with Phoenix Racing. He ended up DNFing in that race, but the reason why is so hilarious. After wrecking the car, it looked like he was about to go to the infield care center, but all of a sudden he jumps right back in his car without his helmet on and drives it. So when his crew chief is trying to tell him to stop, stop, NASCAR wants you to stop, he can't hear anything. He ended up getting parked, and it was really a symbolic end to his time at Phoenix. Phoenix Racing. Before leaving Talladega that day, he wanted to go up to every crew member and thank them for their help. This was truly one of the craziest seasons a NASCAR driver has ever had. And after the 2012 season, Kurt Busch did revive his career, becoming extremely competitive, winning a bunch of races, including the Daytona 500. And although his career didn't end the way him and anyone else hoped, he still goes down as one of the greatest drivers ever and without question, a future Hall of Famer. I was gonna read off his stats during the 2012 season driving for Phoenix Racing, but honestly, who cares? Sure, it wasn't his greatest season in the world, but at the end of the day, the 2012 season was a rebuilding year, not just for him professionally, but most importantly, for him personally. It was a roller coaster in terms of not only his performance, but emotionally. Kurt Busch is without question one of the greatest drivers in NASCAR history, but for one and one season only, a NASCAR champion turned into an underdog. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time. We just won at Daytona. <laughs> With a wrecked race car and chaos all around you. But we got Kurt Busch! <laughs> and I got these guys here at Phoenix. You know, this is unbelievable passion and heart. That's all I can give.